Hey there, Joe Techie back again. Doing a review today of the Zag Folio for the iPad Mini. This uh, actually works for the iPad Mini and the second version of, of the Mini with the Retina display. It'll actually work with the iPad Mini 3 as well, since they all pretty much are the same form factor and, and footprint within in terms of size and thickness. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about this new keyboard that we just got in. It's actually a 135 degree viewing angle and it's got a full-blown keyboard, which is pretty nice. Okay, it looks like, from the information that I read, it looks like it has a three-month battery life, which is pretty decent. Let's take a quick look here and open this up. So, right off the bat, it has a nice little leathery texture to the case, which is very nice. It actually feels very luxurious and has some substance, ultimately, to, to grab onto. Pull this out. Looks like we've got a little literature, a little user guide, charging cables here in the corner as well. So we'll just set that aside. Okay, so here we have the keyboard case. Let's pull this packing material out and set it aside. Alright, so this is the actual case itself with the keyboard. Keyboard's actually relatively thin. If you look at how thin it is there, it's it's pretty pretty darn thin. Very lightweight. I'd have to say this all by itself weighs. It's very light. So let me go ahead and present the iPad Mini into this, so we can just have a quick look and see how this actually looks. It looks like you can only put it in down first. I generally don't like to do that just because of the buttons here tend to hit, but it looks like it kind of gives me no choice. Snaps right in. Very snug fit. Okay. It it is a little bit thick along the back here. If you can see that. It's ultimately for uh, additional protection on the back side in case uh, anything you ever ding it or whatnot. It, it's going to absorb an impact pretty well from what I can tell here. It's actually very snug. It it would looks like it'd be kind of hard to pop this out. I have to put actually put a pretty good amount of pressure on it. But the, uh, the trick would be you actually pull from the top, pushing a little bit of pressure along the back with your finger if you ever need to pop it out. So that is it right there in its full, full back angle. It does not go any further back than that. So that's a pretty steep angle and it doesn't topple over. I've seen some that actually topple over. So this is actually holding itself up, which is pretty good. Um, Okay, so that's that's it right there. Full angle. You can see it is a smart cover as well. It actually wakes the iPad up as soon as I, as soon as I open it. It actually opens up the wakes up the iPad as well. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. We're going to go ahead and pair it up, turn it on, and pair it up here. Okay, so power is on. It's got a little LED light that blinks. It blinked red one time. Let's go into my settings. And looks like I may have to push this little button here on the side. That will actually put it in pairing mode. Okay, now that little blue light is blinking, that means it is now pairing. It shows me the Zag Folio option here to click on. Let's go ahead and click on that. And that's it. It is actually connected. It didn't ask me for any passcode or anything like that. So that's pretty neat. So let's uh, let's do a quick test. Go into Google Docs. Have a test open here. And while the keyboard is is quite small, and again we're talking about a mini, this is quite small. It actually feels pretty nice. It's got a very good responsiveness to the keys, and it is. These are actually full size keys. They are naturally. Uh, closer together because of the size of the iPad mini itself, but being that they're full-size keys it helps quite a bit when it comes to uh, typeability. So I, I think this is a pretty nice case. Zag Keys Folio. Let's close this up. 
So it's got the texture on both sides. You can see that texture, it's actually quite nice. Looks like a leathery look to it. It's got all the cutouts for your buttons and your camera and your ports and your speakers. So it's all there. Uh, I'd have to say the only downside that I don't like about this, it may be a down for some and not others, it just depends on, on your preference. And my particular preference is I like to be able to take my iPad off of the keyboard and then take it ultimately and use it as a, uh, as a tablet as it originally was intended to be used. So that's the only downside to this is that it's it's a little more challenging because you actually have to pop this out of the case, take your iPad out, which I just did. That's fairly simple, but it, it takes a little getting used to doing this uh, without causing any major damage or wear and tear on the on the little snap pieces that because you have these little pieces that hang over which clip onto the little chrome piece. So that if you do that over time for a long time, it's going to wear that out. So I really don't recommend doing that over a long period of time. Maybe every once in a while should be fine. But uh, that that I would say, I have to say that's probably the only negative that I can see about this uh, is that I can't easily take it out on a repeated basis to just use it as a standard tablet. Or so I've seen some that actually completely fold over, or they'll pop off. Uh, in fact, Zag makes one that's exactly like that. It actually, it's a hinge assembly that it comes just like uh, a hinge here and you just slide your iPad into it and then you can either turn it backwards or forwards. So this one doesn't do that, but uh, all in all, it's actually quite a nice keyboard. It still has your standard keys uh, across the top, which are separate from your number of keys. That's actually a bonus, I would think, uh, for a keyboard of this small size to have an extra row of, of your standard uh, iPad function keys. Uh, so that is definitely a bonus, I would say. Down here, you've got your battery button. And what that does is if you hold it down and press your function, it blinks and tells you how many, like right now it's blinking red or green. When it blinks green, it's basically telling me that it has a full charge of 50% or greater. And like I said before, it's, it's gonna go for about three months between charges. Now, the other thing here is you have your caps lock and your tab key. So you would actually have to press your function and caps lock to actually turn the caps lock on then you have your plus and equals you'd have to use your your function key to use that and then your slashes and pipe symbol you don't again have to use your your function key for that and also the tilde in the back quote or apostrophe or whatever that is so those are just a couple of little little caveats not really a big deal those are those are really not so common keys so i really don't think that that's going to be an issue so hopefully you found this useful and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I will be back again doing another review or perhaps a tutorial, so stay tuned for any new things, new content coming out. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to, to uh, put those below down in the, the comment section. And I will be happy to respond if you have any questions or comments, or if you are looking for a particular model iPad or iPad mini, preferably iPad Air 2, because that's actually the newest, I have one of those. We also have, obviously, the Mini. If you have any new keyboards or something that you'd like to see, just uh, definitely shoot me uh, a comment down below, and I'll be happy to see how I can oblige you. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, have a great one. Take care.